name is Sean Chandler. This is my sister, Tisha Messing. And we just finished watching season one of Star Trek Discovery. Now, if you're new to my channel, don't realize this, we've actually reviewed almost every single episode of the season up to this point in time. You can check that out right up here at this link above. See that playlist with all the different episodes in there. We go in depth. Some of them are like, some of them are almost as long yeah. as the episodes of the show when they had those shorter it episodes. It was kind of impressive yeah, we, in we, a bad sort of way. We can talk, talk, talk. Yes. But this video right here will be spoiler filled and we're talking big picture what are our thoughts about the whole season especially with a show like this that had so much intrigue and the big question the whole half first half of the season was where's this going what's going to happen and so you can look back on it have very different sorts of thoughts on the season that's what we're doing right now before we give you our thoughts on it go ahead and tell us down below in the comment section what did you think about season one of star trek discovery this should be interesting because people are so divided on this show very divided and viciously, angrily, in both directions. The people that love it, the people we that hate it, everyone is so passionate. We seem to have rid of most of the super angry ones, though. That, for which I'm thankful. Yeah, they're not angry towards us. There's yes. still people passionate about their feelings towards the shows, but there's not people, like, coming after us, which there is pleasant. Some, yeah, that's very pleasant, because there were some really... Whoa. Yeah, this, either that or our skin has just gotten that much thicker throughout this process. So tell us down below what you thought about us and be nice to us and be nice to each other too in the process. With that said, let's start talking about the good. What was your favorite thing about this season? Captain Lorca. Captain Lorca, absolutely. Certainly of the characters, he's my favorite character. He's a great actor. He really is. And it, it's because he's so likable and he's always been a likable jerk. <laughs> And even when we thought he was the good guy, he was the likable jerk on this show. Yes. And he just felt so complicated, had great rapport and chemistry with everyone. Whereas, we'll talk about later, but, like, everyone else seemed to struggle a little bit to have chemistry with each other. Mm -hmm. He just had a dynamic. With all of the characters, even if that dynamic was antagonistic, yep. all of them had some kind of reaction. Yeah. Attraction or repel, but there was, there was a reaction of some sort with everybody. Yeah, and I think the thing for me, if I were to go with kind of my favorite thing, uh, or thing I maybe most respect, the level to which they were able to create intrigue, to where even in our frustrations, even in our, hey, what's going on, we were asking, hey, what's going on? And we wanted to know that we could yes. have conversations in the <laughs> discussions true. or heated debates down in the comment section because they had these little ideas they were putting out there uh, that you're going, where's this going? And is it the mirror universe? What, what, how's this going to tie together? And they had things in it that were intriguing, different, interesting. Yes, and they a were, lot of fun. And they were trying to be clever with it. And sometimes they were really clever with the way the pieces kind of came together. And sometimes they were less successful. L less successful. And sometimes they were frustrating. And sometimes we were debating the wrong things because they were just a little bit loose with canon per se. Um, but at the same time, they were trying something. They were like yes. going out there and you couldn't, ch you certainly could not charge this show. They were going for broke. Yes, they weren't playing it safe. They weren't just trying to rehash what we'd seen before. They were trying to do something different, putting ideas out there. What are some other things you liked about the show? Uh, the Mary Universe was a lot of fun. It was, yes. it, it was, that is always a fun universe mm -hmm. to get to play in. Uh, it has been featured now in four Star Trek shows. And in each one, it has had something fun to contribute. Uh, there would have been a few less than tasteful things in this one, but that was... Uh... <laughs> you and cannibalism. Uh, you're so <laughs> down on it. I know, I am. I still blame it on that stupid picture, but... <laughs> But I, I, mean, I think it's like a show where they, uh, uh, went, as soon as it went to the Mirror Universe, both of us were just way more intrigued. Yeah. We and were I think both so, more excited about watching it, and it got, got us uh, talking more. And I think they, they figured out how to focus the show a little bit better. Those elements of intrigue, they started giving answers. You're like, what's, why is it going on? Like, what are we oh, seeing in that mirror? That, what's happening with you know. Stamets? And then you're like, oh, this is where this has been headed. This is what this has been building towards. It answered all the questions mm -hmm. that you had from the first half of the yes. season. Yes, and, and so then in that sense, it made the first half of the season better. Yes. And I, it made me go, oh, I need to rewatch this now. Whereas watching it, that first when we were watching, it was like, I don't even know if I want to rewatch this because I'm so yes, frustrated. It was amazingly frustrating. And then they gave us answers and you went, okay, now because of the intrigue, because of the little hints, the little things you put in there and the big reveals of some of these characters, 
Makes you more willing to be like, I might rewatch it. Yes, and I and I want to because so I can see how many little things that were that they put out there that that I missed that I would now catch. Um, yes. that would make me respect so much of that a lot more, as well as now knowing that Lorca was afraid of light. Um, how many times earlier in the season did he shy away from being in the light? Because, mm-hmm. you know, that's what we've always known about the mirror universe. They're afraid of the light. Yeah, um, we totally knew that all. So, not at all. <laughs> other good things, production values. I mean, they put a lot of money into the show. My notes say sparkly. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a show where they clearly... Oops, they, I dropped the notes now. Clearly spent money on it. They wanted their new Star Trek show to be a good Star Trek show. And um, so they poured money into it. So it looks cinematic. Um, Things along those lines worked really nicely. Mm -hmm. Even as much as we hate the new Klingon costumes. Still hate them. It's not because they look cheap. It's just because why did they, they do that? Bad. Yeah, why did why would you come up with that design? But you you came up with a really expensive um, thing. <laughs> bad that design. A, bad design with the, like costumes with the bling. Shapes. Yes, the blinged up. Uh, it's in, the bling ons. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the bling ons. What other positives? Uh, kind of last final things on the just straight up good parts on this one. I'm sorry, I'm still on bling ons. <laughs> <laughs> did you just come up with that? I think it was in a comment okay. earlier. But. So, all in all, there, there's some good twists in there that we enjoyed. There's some characters that characters were a lot, lot of fun. And when we talk, but there's some more characters we liked, but there's gets, we're they're going to get into in the, the mix. mix. Lorca was the only one that we just, right from the get-go, we like Lorca. Until the very last episode where he then just went into a uh, scenery-chewing, <laughs> mustache-twirling villain. And then it felt like they went, well, we have to make it so over the top obvious he's evil that they did that. Right. So with that said, we said we move on to those characters. The mix section, the big mix thing are the characters uh, on the show. Specifically, the characterizations, the way they're handled. I mean, it was just episode to episode. You're all over the place. I mean, it's yeah. just kind of, w- so, you don't yeah. know what you're going to so, get. So like in the early season, Stamets was like, one of my very least favorites. Just because, insufferable. Yeah, because all I did was yell at people, and you're just like, oh, this is going to be one of our main characters. Yeah, know. like this and guy then, is so and unlikable. Then, once he injected himself with an experimental, you know, spores, he suddenly got a, a new personality. Yeah, totally. And you're yeah. suddenly like, oh, I, he, I kind of like him now. And you're suddenly like, oh, I see why somebody might fall in love with him. Be- yeah, Whereas he, before you're like, did he maybe pay him? So in the, uh, it's so in the right out of the gate, Saru, another one that out of the gate he's just so like, Mister Negative. Everything's the worst. That's he's my, written my to be. My race is here. Oval has one ex- reason for existence: to tell when death is coming. And just, <laughs> just yeah, over dramatic stuff like that. And so the first half of the season, he's just the wet blanket in every scene. Everything is terrible. And then once he gets to the mirror universe, it's like suddenly getting to the mirror universe. He got a spine injected. Mm-hmm. And so suddenly you're like, oh, I see how he's able to get it, be in Starfleet and function. Because in the first half of the season, I yes. spent most of it wondering, how does he even function in Starfleet with right. the way he's acting? There's no way he would ever have made it through Starfleet Academy. And, and then we get a, our lead character, Michael, raised by Vulcan. So naturally, she's not the warmest, most charismatic character because of the lack of emotion thing. Mm-hmm. Combine that with in our first two episodes, she becomes the mutineer. So nobody likes her. So the first, or that arc, once you get past the first two episodes and you move into that first arc, nobody likes her. Stamets is being a jerk. Sorrow's afraid of her. Uh, Tilly's like, I don't know what to do with you. She's not a warm character. And so then the cast just had no chemistry there at yeah, the beginning. And the entire time, it seemed like they were all just constantly pitted yeah, against just, each other. Yes, and that was conflict. That was... A lot of our comments in the first half of the season was, you know, the, through the entire fall uh, half of the season, we're like, oh, here's another episode where the Starfleet is not acting like Starfleet. Yeah, because it's because, so pivotal to the idea of the Federation, the and uh, Star optimistic Trek is. view of the future. And so then we get into the mirror universe and suddenly we're like, oh, these people know how to act as a crew and they're, they're acting like Starfleet. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is... And they all become a lot more likable. They become characters yeah. you actually kind of like. And that's what makes it so mixed is that if you look at the first few episodes, you know, I'd list off all these characters as bad, unlikable, and you get towards the end and suddenly that's, oh, I, I like these characters for this reason, this reason, this reason, this, this was a fun scene, this is a fun dynamic. 
And they just, right out of the gate, it's just so weird how off they were. I, actually, it's not weird being that that's a Star Trek tradition. <laughs> it's come out of the gate, not not at your best. Yes. Um, but not this unlikable. Yes. Like, most of the... or Most of the other series, you had some kind of idea of who they were going to develop into. Yes. And you usually had your... Were picking your favorites by, you know, somewhere through the first season... But in the first few episodes, you're like, okay, that's a really interesting character and things like that. But this, but so you, it, you really couldn't, you couldn't yeah. figure out if you would like Stamets. If you look at him in the first episode he's in, you'd be like, this guy's just a jerk. I guess that's his dynamic on the show. He's the antagonistic guy. No, that's not his character at all. Yeah. And then you get like three episodes in with him and he, his character's Jason changes. And so I, our, our notes on him are pretty much every, every character we're like, eh. Mixed mixed, 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 mixed. Lorca, good. Mixed, 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 mixed. Yeah. And then we get to the Emperor and written weird. Yeah. Because we okay. have because one of the things you said, like, so Lorca goes the whole season fooling all of Starfleet into thinking he's a Starfleet officer. Emperor is made captain. And two hours <laughs> in, like, like her bridge crew is like, should we be, you know, and, and, and she's like, I have this saying that is well known that, that, you know, is not at all appropriate. And she and the, she's like, everyone's looking at like, I... Yeah, who is this sociopath? Yeah, what do we do with this person who's our captain? Maybe something really changed in her during those, you know... It, it just even, like, as you're watching it, they just came from the mirror universe. Like, they were there... 12 hours, two days before, whatever. They just came from there. They just saw mirror version, of, or they just saw this version. There's just no mirror version. Yeah. It's been, they've never even met the other, like, really, this was your way to show this? Anyway, we're going to wrap, wrap trail a little bit too long. Any other mixed things? That was the big one we written down. Yeah, that was the big one we wrote down. Wrote down. Let me see. Hmm. Um, so from there, moving on to the bad, the, I think the big one, the pacing, the actual storytelling itself. Continuity. Continuity. Just those sort of just made us so frustrated at the beginning because it kicked off and we're like, I don't know where this is going. I don't know how it ties together because they told us this is the prime universe and this isn't the prime universe. Yeah. So in like we end the the season and they're like, oh, look, it's the Enterprise. Enterprise. I'm like, and then the music kicks in and like it is. It's literally in space. They are playing the original theme song. Yeah. I'm like, okay, but those aren't the uniforms for the Enterprise. And... Somebody made a comment that in there's a NBC licensed, um, not NBC, sorry, CBS, CBS no. licensed, yeah, uh, licensed book that uh, apparently explains away the uniforms. I'm like, but anytime after the Spanish American War, uh, uniforms are fairly standard throughout in armed services. Prior to that, yeah, you're gonna have like different units have different outfits that are very unique and distinctive, but it's not... Yeah, I mean, this sort of idea that they're all over the place and so ch- it's, desperately trying to explain away blatant continuity errors. So that... I know that people were saying that I'm holding on to continuity and things like that too much, but at the same time, it's also... It takes you out of the world yeah. when you suddenly are looking at it, you're like, that's... But it, that's not the outfit that we that's should be the, doing. That's the problem, is that if they had said... This is a reboot. Okay, Don't then I know what reboot's I, fine. Then I know what I'm watching. If yeah. they had said it a hundred years after Voyager, then I know what I'm watching, and you can do whatever you want. Yeah. If you tell me it's Prime, it's a prequel to the original Star Trek. It's ten years before it, and nothing adds up. Just, and you put in things that are suppo- that are constantly throwing it into our face. But, hey, yeah. here, here's Harry Mudd. Here's Sarah. Yes. Here's this, uh, we're going to make a reference to something. Oh, we're going to throw a treble on the desk. And we're just going to constantly throw in things that make you go, oh, hey, that, I remember seeing that. And then you see it and you're like, but that's, that's not, right. not what I saw. Yeah. It, so that. It, there's When there's so much to it, so much, and you're looking at the Klingons, that's not how Klingons are. That's not what Klingons are like. That's not what the Federation's like. It's not just canon purity. It's not just the uniforms. If we were just talking about uniforms, sure. That's nitpicking, but it's not that. That's a symbol of this bigger problem of they're just not following continuity at all. It's not purism. 
It's just they don't value it at all. And they told us it was prime. That's a problem. That yes. is a big problem. And that's why we bring it up. And beyond just the canon stuff, the, the, the way they did the first half of the season and then the way it ended at the end, so uneven. Yeah. The, just, oh, yeah, just... The, the treatment of the war was a... Uh, it felt like basically here's the fed rest of the Federation and here's Discovery who's going to just randomly bop, boop, I now. do this, I do this. I mean, even the episodes where Discovery was actively doing something with the war effort, there's the time where they go in and they're like, we have to get there to save this colony. And they literally come jump in, it. they blow something up, and then they jump out. It's they one minute. Yeah, it's one minute where they're sitting there, there and I'm like, they don't offer aid to that colony. They don't help them. They don't make sure that people are actually fine, that there's nothing else there. They just jump in, throw off some photon torpedoes, and jump out. And, that. and so, so we get to the end of the season, and we go, okay, we just had a full season about a war. And the whole, like, the Discovery was doing things, talking about the war, doing technology for the war, trying to win the war. Lorca, that's, we got to win the war, whatever we got to do. And there's so little actual war. We keep mm -hmm. hearing about the war, and then we even jump back nine months later. We're losing the war. The Federation is almost decimated. And it all just feels so underwhelming, unsatisfying. It's and then weird. They, it felt like the showrunners went, okay, we're tired of doing a war storyline, so we're just going to wrap it up in a nice little bow and say done. And so they did. And the storyline felt unresolved, so they're like, okay... We have solved it by handing Lorel the bomb. Yeah. That solved the entire problem and War's over. And war's They're over unified. and apparently the Klingons meet in a cave for their Klingon High Council now. A cave that also looks like Star Wars where they've got the little alcove things, mm. you know. So it, it both was a cave and uh, future. That even reminded I, me of the uh, new version of the Courtroom from Star Trek VI with the elevated chambers, people down below. That's what came to my mind. But it was a room. Yeah, I, it's true. <laughs> it's, there were some changes. It was a little, it was a little Mustafar, uh, um, you know, a volcano planet -y. Yes, yes. It was indeed. So I, th those are, like, story-wise... Also, for, like, for me, there was the intrigue side of the first part that I liked, but then there was another side to it that was, like... I don't know where this is going. And some of that was Star Trek expectations where you think it's called Discovery, it's Star Trek, it's about discovering new worlds. That's what the synopsis of the show said it was going to be. What are we doing? Like, why are we, why is the Federation torturing the space bear? Like, I don't, what, what is going on here? Like, I don't understand. So there's a lot of weird things like that. Um, so anyway, any final big category bads? Then we'll talk about favorite moments, favorite episodes, just real quick as we kind of close out a little bit. But any other bads hey. that kind of stuck out? No, it's the overall how they tied all of their story. That just all got all together. Yeah. And very weird characterizations, as we talked about in the yeah. next section. Just uneven characters were. So, very odd. And makes some sense, given that they had a showrunner change and they had a pretty troubled production that brought the show to, to the light. And so you can... I wonder if that's what we're seeing, is that hey, you have so many big changes well, to where... So one of the original thoughts that they had for how they wanted to do the show was they were going to do it as uh, arcs that were like maybe a season mm -hmm. or two, and each time they would change crew yeah. cast completely. So it'd be like, okay, here's a maybe half a season with... We're, doing this storyline that we've heard reference to before and then we have this storyline and that was what the original showrunner wanted to do and then CBS was like no we think that's a terrible idea and uh, and they were like we want to do a full seven year or you know however long we keep it we want to keep the same cast and then at one point it sounded like they ended up going back to that so I, yeah, I don't know where they're going to with get, it get the See, final yeah, around. this would be one of those ones that's going to be interesting when the show is done, you know, five or so years after where you get a behind the scenes type of thing because you get some of those. And or because they're going full mystery. Because they do this intrigue, we didn't know Lorca, his role, we didn't know Michelle Yeoh was coming back. Perhaps the deal, Discovery is done and we pick up with Captain Pike's Enterprise on our Star Trek anthology series 
Come back next seat. There's my theory right oh. there. I'm sure they're not going to do it. <laughs> no, yeah, they're not going to do that. But it's just, just to take what you just said and like, they set this one up to pass the baton over to uh, Captain Pike. Hey, oh. we were talking about um, Ga uh, Gotham by Gaslight earlier. Yes. Fun connection. You know who voiced Batman in? Kevin Conroy, please. Bruce Greenwood. Captain Pike in these new Star Trek movies. Everything comes together. Ah. Bruce Greenwood ties it all Should together. Should be Kevin Conroy. Well, it's Elseworlds, so it's okay to have someone. No, that's but true. Of course, of course, Kevin Conroy said this. Sorry, yes. we went on a little bit of a rabbit trail there. <laughs> Favorite episode of the season? Hmm. You you said Harry Mudd all along. I, Harry Mudd, time loop. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one that I immediately thought of, but I also really like the Mirror episodes. But then you get into some objectionable portions. So I don't, I don't. I don't, because also they're not just one single episode. Yeah. It's a, it's a multi part thing. So I don't know. I So it's one of the, it's something there. Okay. So if you had to go one single Harry Mudd time loop pops. Yeah. But Mirror Universe story arc was the best. Yes. I'd go, I, that's the same thing I'd say. I might say that last one with the, the Mirror one. My, was that the one that I said a couple weeks ago was that I said might be my yeah. favorite? Yeah. So I maybe compete that one with Harry Mudd. But as just a standalone, Harry Mudd probably mirrors stuff. Yes. Was, I thoroughly enjoyed that little arc there. And that's what made the season so frustrating. If we got gotten to the end of it and we were just angry the whole time, it's not really frustrating. It's like disappointing. Yes. But because they had just enough in there where we went, That's this, interesting. This what is a show I like. This is good. Yes. And then it ended with those two episodes where, was, or where you went, ooh, this is back to the stuff where this is off. Something's not yeah, right. They, they, if they had ended with, we go back, that could have been, mm -hmm. we get back to the normal universe, that could have been interesting. Or if they had, what in my ideal version, they would have done the Mirror Universe two more episodes, gone right back, gotten back, right back, not had a time jump. And then to a second season where they tie off the, the Klingon War because the, this was just tied off not well. Yeah. It was just too hurry. To get Scribble it. it in. Yep. We come back. Things are worse than ever. <laughs> oh, we just put a bomb there and give you the detonator. We're good. We're good. We're good. Not a great satisfying conclusion. Overall, could you give this a letter grade, the season a letter grade? Hmm. I don't know what I would give it, so I'm yeah, gonna see if you could give it an answer. I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I if I had to, I because I, I, I got to review things for my channel. I got to give answers. I, I give like a C plus. I, I don't think I could recommend it as to where I'm at right now, but I'm interested enough that to keep watching, and I could see liking things more. But I don't think I could go just because so much of it was so frustrating and ended so poorly. Because I'd, I'd go like B plus for the mirror stuff, probably. Like, I thoroughly enjoyed that, but mm -hmm. I think I'd go C plus for the season as a whole. C minus, maybe? Ooh. D. Ooh. Whew. Harsh, harsh. But I, I am it. harsh, but it's also, there was so much frustration, yeah. and it it ended on such a disappointing yeah, note. That's and true. that's the thing, is like. It could have redeemed itself. It could have redeemed itself because it really built up anticipation and got me really interested for yeah. all the mirror stuff where I was like, okay, I'm looking forward to talking about this with Sean and and getting people's reactions. And then, you know, we get back to the normal universe and I was like, okay. And I was like, all right, uh, maybe this final episode, they'll pull it through somehow. I don't know how, but then they got a shorter than... Usual. I mean, it was almost not, not a short episode, but, but it was it was shorter. It was shorter episode that they're like, OK, we've wrapped it all up. And so it leaves you disappointed overall mm -hmm. so that like, you know, if it had ended with the mirror, I would have given yeah. it a higher. Like we talked about how the mirror stuff made the first half of the season better as you yes. had answers. You went, oh, this it's, sort of ending. It makes, makes the, the war story less. It, it, makes, it makes the season a whole less because the war is yes. less. So, um, especially with the war, where you're like, oh, this whole thing was just. Well, yeah, because I mean, like, we watch uh, the Emperor who can't manage to act for like 12 hours and fool the crew for 12 hours, but Lorca did it for like almost a year. Yeah. yeah. So, and, yeah, yeah so, it's things like that that just. Drag the whole thing drag down. Drag the whole thing down where I'm like. Oh, so it was, anyway, it, so yeah, 
as we actually went down to sit down to watch this, the question you asked was, so are you going to watch season two? And I'm going to. I mean, that's what I'm definitely going to do. But at the same time, it, it just ended at a point where you're like, hmm, I, I'm not it, like I had been so excited this last little bit. I was getting excited because I was getting excited. Yeah. And then this the last two episodes really were kind of a hmm, my excitement level just went down. Yeah, so, so. there you go. That's our take on it. How about you guys? Tell us down below in the comment section, what did you think about the season as a whole? I know it's got some big fans. I know it's got some big critics. A key one I'd like to know that we had said on our review as well for the, the last episode, you guys that love the season, were you as disappointed by this final two episode arc as we were? Because it just really, it really is such a woo, ending on such a whimper. So much disappointment as people that were getting our excitement up with the mirror stuff, and then it just went down and level. Tell us down below. If are you, you watching can... season two? What are you looking forward yes. to in season two? And what are your you... theories for the new captain? Yeah, theories for new cat, all that fun stuff. Tell you, tell us your thoughts down below. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. But the key thing is I don't want to just talk about movies and TV and Star Trek. I want to talk about it with you. So join me down in the down comment there. section. Tell us your thoughts on the season, your theories, where you think it's all headed. And as always, thank you for watching.